for commuters on the London transport system, there is little choice really than to continue on with their daily routine. But here in Britain's capital, there is an obvious affinity with the plight of Parisians. This city has itself been targeted by mass casualty attacks. The former Scotland Yard commissioner at the helm during the last major attacks here is in no doubt we are entering a new, much more dangerous phase. This last few weeks, with the bombs in Istanbul, the Sharm el Sheikh plain, and now Paris, are showing uh, this group ISIL to have some capabilities a bit like they had in 2005 when it was AQ inspired. It was London's transport system which was targeted a decade ago. Now Paris and other recent multi-pronged attacks are a worrying indication that the capability of ISIS is now catching up with its ambition, according to former Defence and Home Secretary Lord Reid, who now heads the Institute for Security and Resilient Studies. The ambition remains the same, but they are adapting to circumstances, and in particular the circumstances of young men in particular going to Syria to be trained in, uh, in that locale and then coming back to this country. Around 750 British nationals are believed to have travelled to Syria and Iraq. Around half are now back in the UK. The former head of the National Counterterrorism and Security Office says many of them will have had battlefield training. We've got people now that have actually potentially killed people in Iraq and Syria coming back to our country and quite frankly we don't know who they all are, where they all are and it's impossible for the security services with the resources they've got and the police to actually um, keep an eye on these people, let alone keep them under surveillance. The authorities say the public should not be alarmed but certainly vigilant. An urgent review is now underway to ensure the UK can properly respond if a major attack hits British streets. But again, there is no specific intelligence beyond the general severe terror threat level. Mark White, Sky News.